Chief Minister, 60 years of Gibraltar coming before the United Nations and very little has changed. Well, you could even see benefit in that. I mean, remember that for 60 years there's been a very aggressive campaign by Spain to try and get the committee to act in its favour. There have in fact been resolutions which were not favourable to Gibraltar in 1969 in particular, but by continuing to come to the committee what we do is we ensure that the committee is aware that there is a homogeneous people represented by its elected representative, the Chief Minister of Gibraltar, putting the view of the people of Gibraltar before the committee. Now I've been coming, as I told the committee, for 21 years. I started coming to assist Joe Bassano. I then addressed the committee as leader of the opposition in 2011 and as chief minister since then with uh, COVID permitting. You know, every opportunity that we have got, we've come here to defend the position of the people of Gibraltar. We will continue to do so. It's fundamentally important, even though people in Gibraltar might be frustrated that the committee doesn't take us off the list, etc. It's equally important that we continue to check any attempts by any third party to move the committee in its favour. And that's why we must be here 60 years, 120 years, or as many as it takes. Now, we talk about the real politic of the situation. You are telling the committee that you're in the middle of treaty negotiations for the benefit of both Gibraltar and the people of the neighbouring region of Spain. But we hear the Spanish delegates talking about how hurt the Spanish neighbouring people are by the Gibraltar withdrawal from the European Union. Well, what he said was that they were hurt by the activity of Gibraltar. This is the argument that Gibraltar is somehow a parasite to the area around Gibraltar, which they cannot reconcile, A, with reality, and B, with the idea that by doing a deal with us, there's going to be shared prosperity. The prosperity is already there. It's already shared. It's generated by Gibraltar. It's generated by our British sovereignty and by the entrepreneurial nature of the activity of Gibraltarian businessmen and businesswomen. And, of course, what they cannot reconcile is those two positions, because they know the reality and that's why they're negotiating a treaty with us, which is that we can create even more prosperity for Gibraltar and for the region around us. I think that's a good thing. I think it's good for our generation and for future generations, both of those who live in Gibraltar and those who live outside Gibraltar. I represent the people who live in Gibraltar. It's my responsibility to get the best deal for us. But in part of getting the best deal for us, we also have to show the benefits that there will be for those who are sitting around the negotiating table with us. We cannot turn up at the table and simply take. We have to show the benefits to those who are going to be there as part of the negotiating process as part of the deal-making process. The next time Gibraltar addresses the United Nations in October, two things might be different. One, we might or might not have a treaty and two, it might not be you. Well, indeed, um, it, it may or may not be me whether or not there's been a general election between now and then, because, of course, uh, you've seen in the past that when there has been an election uh, ongoing, it has been necessary for uh, the Deputy Chief Minister to address the UN whilst I've been campaigning in Gibraltar. So um, everything is in the air. But I wanted to make very clear today that if this was my last address as the leader of the Gibraltarians to a United Nations forum, they should be very clear about one message which has permeated everything I've said, everything every Chief Minister of Gibraltar Gibraltar has said to date. Gibraltar belongs to the Gibraltarians. If you don't like it, lump it.